We're here at the Arimba RSL to witness the protest meeting against the Wallara 2 coal mine. We have around about 250 community members who rolled up uh, today to hear the background for the mine. What motivated you to come along this morning? Um, well, there's many reasons, but the main one is I'm a Duralong resident and uh, one of the Longwall mines, um, Longwall um, tunnel, whatever you call that, yep. uh, will be right under my farm. And uh, there is a predicted subsidence of 2.5 metre right under my home and my land, my dams and water tanks and creeks. So you're, direct, you're, you're likely to be directly affected by this, uh, by this proposed mine? Well, yes, in regards to subsidence, in regards to loss of water, mm. uh, I'm greatly affected by that. And how, how, um, how do you judge the mood of the meeting today um, here at the Arimba RSL? We all agree that we don't want that mine for not just a selfish reason, uh, but because it's a, science is proving that it should not happen. It's, there's too much risk. Uh, I would expect bring a motion to a council meeting um, and in terms of where council goes from there. I'd just like to ask you why you're here and, and what do you think um, the sentiment of the meeting is? Okay, um, I've been a community worker on the Central Coast for about 25 years. I'm also a mother and a grandmother and I am passionate about the environment. Um, I think this is a really bad idea for our environment, environment, for our water catchment and for the future of our grandchildren on the coast. And this issue has been going for some 20 years, as we've heard from the speakers here. Have you followed this issue over, over the time? And what is it that specifically concerns you about it? Um, I think the specific issue is that it's in a water catchment area. It's close to homes. The coal won't even be used in our country. It'll be shipped straight out. There's already enough coal ships lined up along our coastline. Um, the impacts on the air quality, um, you know, there's many studies on the coast, as has been said today, about um, respiratory illnesses with people in the areas where we're already mining. Um, I don't think we need any more. We need to be improving our environment, not making it worse. Uh, Councillor Kyle McGregor. Uh, Kyle, why are you here today? Well, I'm here today to hear from the community about their thoughts and feelings on this matter. Obviously, it's come up to a council meeting before. We'd opposed the mine. Um, I moved the motion on that, and I wanted to see if there was still that real visceral feeling, and it's clear today that there is from the amount of attendees and the way that people have been speaking, just how opposed they are to this mine. How do you think the community wishes to go ahead with this issue, Kyle? I think they'd like to see their elected representatives do whatever they can in their powers to try and stop this mine from going ahead and I think that we'll have to explore all the relevant options and do what we can to represent the community here. And uh, the, uh, the, the PAC recommended this just uh, some 10 days ago. Um, how is it possible that, um, that this, do you think, has happened uh, despite the fact that this mine's been knocked back uh, previously? Well, I think it's clear that sometimes, even though you have to go through the relevant processes, that outcomes maybe were going to end up being that way anyway. So, unfortunately, it doesn't reflect what people want, and there's been a long process here, and it's been quite clear for a long time with a lot of the evidence, a lot of the community concerns are relevant. Um, the PAC hasn't heeded that, so now it's time to maybe look at other avenues for the community and their representatives to take up to try and address the issues. One of the main speakers of today are the head of the ACO, the Australian Coal Alliance, um, Alan Hayes. Um, how did you think this uh, impromptu, uh, somewhat engaged community meeting uh, progressed today? I think it went very well, but it has been typical of what's happened in the past when we've had public meetings. There's such a strong feeling in the community of the Central Coast that this mine is not in the public interest. People turn up, they are concerned and they show continually they do not want this mine. All the government has to do is listen to the people and realise that it is not in the public interest, it is not of any benefit to the Central Coast, and knock it on the head for all time. Well, Alan, you've been here, you've been battling this for 20 years, we heard, um, and you're, you're a real warrior in this regard, and I understand that this, this mine's effectively been defeated twice before. What, uh, what suggestions do you have to actually, um, to actually enact the will of the community um, differently this time around? Well, we're left in a situation where we're going again to court. We need people to put their hands in the pocket. 
to help with the funding and I'm sure the Central Coast community will be generous in that regard and I do believe that once again we will defeat the coal mine. But what we need people to do is write to the Premier, write to Josh Frydenberg on the federal level because he's got the power to reject this mine under the Environmental Protection Biodiversity Conservation Act and say we don't want it. The science clearly demonstrates that this mine is bad for the Central Coast community. We cannot afford to take a chance on our water. Even if it's only a 1% chance that the water could be lost, it is 1% too much. They can do that because at the end of the day, we win in court the mining company won't go away. Unless the legislation is in place to protect the water catchment for all time, the mining company will do yet again what they've done before, just resubmit their development application and we go through the whole process all over again. Well that's, um, that's an inch, so much like the Central Coast Airport which I understand has a, an, an act of parliament to, uh, to restrict its use. You're asking, uh, asking effectively the parliament of New South Wales to, to do the same to protect the water and the valleys here on the Central Coast? Well we are and it's nothing that is too difficult because when in opposition I met with a shadow cabinet which includes the current Premier and all the other players that are there today and the Liberals agreed that there should not be a coal mine in the water catchment valleys. They agreed in writing with the ACA on behalf of the Central Coast community that they would, if elected to government, introduce legislation to protect the water catchment from coal mining and extractive industry. Barry O'Farrell stood up in front of the electronic and print media at Woodbury Park in front of 500 people and said, no ifs, no buts, a guarantee there will be no coal mining in the wild water catchment valleys. So you're simply saying that there's a draft already there, they simply need to uh, listen to the people and, and, and act in this regard? Well, what they could do, David Harris, the member for Wyong, will be reintroducing into Parliament in February when it goes back the Wyong Water Catchment Protection Bill. Instead of sending it to a filibuster and trying not to vote on it, vote on it and support David Harris's bill so that our water catchment is protected from this outrageous proposal. Thank you very much for talking to us today. My pleasure. One of the participants at today's uh, meeting is Jeremy Buckingham. Jeremy is a Greens MLC and has driven down from Coffs Harbour specifically for this meeting. Why are you so passionate about this particular issue, Jeremy? Well, it's absolute madness to approve a massive coal mine in the heart of the drinking water catchment of 300,000 people. The Central Coast is a key growth area. It's incredibly sensitive in terms of its water, its biodiversity and managed planning. Uh, to approve a coal mine makes no sense. The community know that, they've been saying no for decades and yet we've got a planning system that inexorably has led to an approval. Now it's before the courts, the Greens stand with all those people who think that coal mining makes no sense and we'll fight it here in the community, in parliaments and in court. Jeremy, how do you think the community uh, is taking this? Um, for, you've been a campa campaigner on this around the state. How do you think this particular Central Coast community is taking this? Well, this community is well armed. They've got a great community group led by Alan Hayes with the Australian Coal uh, uh, Alliance. They're doing a marvellous job. They're paying attention. They have for decades. They've had enormous stamina and they've faced down this mine again and again and again. They've had a lot of promises made to them by coalition governments and various the major parties. Those haven't led to the situation that they want where the mine is ruled out. So the community is well armed. They're paying attention. And if they're not, they should because this could put at risk, the drinking water that people rely on every day in an enormously important area to New South Wales, the Central Coast. It's politically sensitive, it's environmentally sensitive and the Greens are going to make a big deal of it in the lead up to the New, the New South Wales state election in 2019. Is it true that how, however this has been passed by the PAC, that, uh, that compensation with our, our free trade uh, agreements with South Korea and so on uh, would, be, uh, would be part of, have to be part of the mix? Um, if this mine was stopped. The government can cancel the licence for this mine without compensation. They can put the public interest first. That's what's in the Act, that is the law. If it's in the public interest, the interest of the people of Central Coast, that this mine not go ahead, then they can stare down this Korean coal mining company and say no, they can cancel their licence and there's nothing they can do about it. And even if it went to court, even if the government faced a few million dollars of compensation, that's a price worth paying to protect the drinking water of hundreds of thousands of people. We've got, a, we've got a, a drying, warming climate, 
we've got climate change on our doorstep. We need to put water security before the profits of multinational coal mining companies. The government should act in the public interest and stop this coal mine in its tracks. As they continue the battle. Thank you very much. One of the newly elected councillors, Councillor Jeff Sundstrom. Um, Jeff, why did you come and what did you think uh, the, the, the feeling of the meeting was? Well, I came because it's a, a vital issue and it's been going for 22 years and it's time for it to be brought to a head. Um, the community have really stood up today. It's a fantastic turnout. A, I don't know if anybody else has mentioned it, but the room that was originally booked was found to be too small and we've actually taken over the auditorium. So that's a really a positive sign. I think that um, there's a clear indication of where people from the council stand on this. Uh, the mayor came along and spoke really well. Uh, Councillor Kyle McLaughlin was here and unfortunately because the, um, uh, of the delays at the start of the meeting he had to leave before he had an opportunity to speak. But um, I can tell you that I stand with Kyle and with uh, the Mayor uh, that we're dead against this. Uh, how did you think the, uh, the broadness of this campaign uh, affects the, uh, the likeliness of this success? I was just thinking about that fact this morning and uh, sort of if an analogy can be used, it's like there's a, there was a peloton already and the peloton's just increased dramatically in size and um, I think we've reached a, a critical mass and we're going to be able to make some really good changes because this legal battle is crucial to the future of the Central Coast. There is hope, there is always hope. You know, it's not over until a fat lady sings. <laughs>